of the day. Hello and welcome back to Red Bull Home Ground live in Berlin. C9, last year's runners-up, are just one step away from having another crack at the trophy. However, G2, of course, have very different plans. My name's Ian alongside Tom and Mitch. Ian Chambers. Thank you very much. He's been doing my impression all day behind the scenes. And <laughs> what do you mean? Very much That's the first time he's done first that. First time I've That's tried that. That's not true. It's been all day. It's been Come all day. On, no, I'm kidding. Look, let's get, let's get serious for a minute here. G2 have got a lot of work to do, Tom, if they want to bounce back here. Yeah, especially going into Pearl. Like, uh, that map that we haven't seen from them. We heard, like, whispers and talk that they're confident on the map. They yeah. were happy to play in the last series as the third map if it went there. It's been picked by their opponent, even though C9, when we saw them recently over in America, it didn't go the best. So uh, clearly they look at it as a counter pick or maybe something that just didn't quite go their way in the matches that they played. But it, it definitely still gives G2 an opening. I, I don't yeah. think this is a done deal, a signed, sealed, delivered sort of idea, but mm. I do think now this is firmly in the hands of C9. That first map was so dominant. Well, you know, I, I mean, I said it before the series started. I, I said it on the desk, believed in C9 the whole way, and just, just it's just like no surprise. Exactly. He said C920. Yeah, like, that's I, think, the same, I think that's right? what he said, right? Or did, I mean, I swear. C20? C20. I thought that's what he said. <laughs> Must not have seen the first map. You lot are out of order. You know that was pre recorded, right? No, no, it wasn't. Yeah. I, I watched it live. the movie map. <laughs> I, I literally, I was, I was right I there. I saw him. He was over there. I was, the, I was holding the camera. I could, it couldn't have been. <laughs> <laughs> On the flip side, look, Cloud9, like we said from the get-go, they are, it seems like they're hungry. Obviously, it's a different roster. But as an organization, after two losses in a grand final, they are hungry to make it there again. For sure. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't think there's any doubt. I think you look at, like, Coach Jimmy, he's always been someone that wants to get those victories. I think it would mean a lot to the team to actually just get that trophy. Like they, they've had a couple of bites of the cherry and it hasn't quite gone their way. So I'm, I'm hoping they can make it back and give another run of it. But at the same time, G2, this roster looks exciting. It'd be a shame to lose them. What do you think of his compositions, Mr. Mitch? I mean, in terms of uh, what's drawing my eye, obviously we're just looking at different Sentinels on each side, the Killjoy versus a Cypher. And each one has its benefits. Cypher up against... Oh, thank you very much for the red pulling. Uh, Cypher up against uh, a Neon. That's really where the, the fun begins. We saw it on Sunset and how some of those traps can really disrupt how you're entering into a site. That's something that Jogamo is going to have to be concerned with that Oxy might not have to be. The main concern, though, is can you shut Oxy down? And can you stop Rossi, who, when Cloud9 are playing this map, he's usually an okay player. But after the performance he just put up, he is the one you're looking to shut down coming into this map. Do we go all the way, Tom? Why not? You think? Why not, yeah. Is that is that a thought or is that a one? Both. It's a bit of both, isn't it? Mm. I mean, I'll give you a why not. It's C9's pick. They've just demolished G2. Rossi's on fire. Oxy seems to be winning that head-to-head. -head. It's going to be a tough game. All right, then. Could this be the end of the day or will we see this go to the third and final map? We've got a determined Cloud9 looking to get that spot in the grand final for a shot of redemption. And we've got G2 looking for their back-to-back -back victories of the day. Let's get into Pearl now with Tom and Mitch. Well, we talked about momentum, and for G2, they came off the back of a series win, but they have lost the first map. Their choice, 13 to five, carrying that conversation forward. Momentum seems to be firmly in favor of C9. Can they keep it up though? It's one thing to demolish G2 once, but the second time around, they're gonna be a bit more wary of what they're up against. And you think you can catch Jogamo on back-to-back -back bad maps or rough maps, it's uh, it's not likely a challenge. And early on, it's Valen walking right into the army of C9. They've got plenty more players looking to swing, and Trent found that out the hard way. Both players on a taken down, and this just throws the defense of G2 into disarray. Yeah, look at the rotation. Of course, you've had an immediate pull towards that A side of the map, but the majority of this C9 roster was ready and waiting watching for that spike to now come back over to the B site to join them. And only one man really standing anywhere near that action. Jorgamo has to almost try and find one and just get out of there and he just gets domed immediately. Zeppa takes him out, Leaf trying to be the hero, but he meets the same fate. Well, quite a quick conclusion to the pistols. If I'm not mistaken, that will be three for three for C9. And that can be understated, the benefit of having those injections of rounds. It was a 4-0 and start on the previous map, and, well, if G2 had had a 4-0 and start, they'd have a hell of a lot more rounds than they did. 
Jonah P going to attempt to recover, but a firing squad awaits him. And a flawless round for C9. The last map was pretty close to being flawless. The start of this one is. Yeah, of course, for people who are a fan of the guard, you might, you might have heard of them. This is pretty much a very similar comp to what they used to run, just jet out, neon in. So when they say they were comfortable on this map, they really haven't like revolutionized the wheel. It is just <laughs> okay. very similar to what we used to see play for this team. So I can imagine there will be a level of comfort for the side of G2. Of course, the core almost identical to what we used to see on that previous roster. A couple of upgrades here and there. But it's whether or not we can now really see them get moving because this C9 roster has got the momentum. There's no doubt about it. The confidence that they feel fighting in those early rounds, the way they played on that previous map, especially on the attack side, and that's where they're going to be kicking things off here. And once again, for G2, this is a moment of let's just try and do as much damage as we can with very, very little. Oh, Classicos. As we saw in Sunset, look, there were rounds where massive damage was done, but this was players firing themselves into Cypher setups on tight corners that had plenty of numbers on the other side. This is a much more open map. Go through middle, sure. You're going to give them chances. Through art, could be just the same. The A site, a few spots to hide behind, but getting the same value over on B is tough, and that's C9's logic. I'll take it. Towards this side of the map and clean up a couple kills. Three, in fact, under their belt. For G2, they've managed to drop one, but in order to get damage, they'll need a few more. It's one of those rounds where if you can't remove the rifles, the rest doesn't really matter that much. You can invest back into a stinger. You can put a pistol there with it. Decent position for Fallon, but well, luckily for Zephyr, Oxy is there to save the day. And in terms of the orbs, that's not bad at all. Oxy's going to find himself halfway to his ult. Zephyr as well, just a couple away. That's where you can kind of hope to pad the gap a little bit when it comes to this sort of round, where you're definitely coming in with weaker weaponry. And for G2, after the last map, this is kind of where you hope they get off to a slightly better start. Well, there was just, just no <laughs> need for that. Just that was just circle. cruel from our EVS team. Couple of missed shots. Well, more than a couple of magazine full of missed shots. A clip, but not in the way that he wanted it to be. 2 0 start for C9. They went 4 0 to begin the previous map, and this was the round that toppled the dominoes. G2 come in with rifles, and they're up against weaknesses, but still plenty that C9 can use to take these brawls. And if you think Oxy is going to be limited by the weapon that's in play. This is dangerous. Oh, no. Drone up close. They know there's a player there. Stun goes in immediately. Here's the utility. And there's the stinger. Oxy traded out. And Valen has to give up that position as he steps back in. He finds out just why they should have conceded control. C9 in a four versus three. And G2 again on the back foot in the buy round. This is the ult as well for Zephyr. That plant's going to get all that utility right gone from the side of G2, yeah, why not? You're playing a bonus round. Sure, now you have the rifles to play with, but you disallow Jorgamo going for those pacey takes. You remove any flashes, although he has managed to drop the KO. That will eventually become go. evening up off the scoreline, but you can already see how passive this post plant has become. Nice. Finally, Zeppel will drop, but there's so much more still to find already. Using the grab well to pull them out of position. A push through to try and deny. It's a nice shot from Jorgamo, but still nobody left on that defusal, and it won't be enough. Another triple to add to the collection for Rossi and Moose to deal the final blow. This is utterly unbelievable for back-to-back -back maps with this kind of a start, upsetting the rhythm of G2 before they can even get started. Can't even hear the beat as C9 control everything. Oxy's initial fight by his space, that flash sending Valen back, and he goes out. A little greedy for the fight, wants to take it, but C9 have been quick on the trigger time and time again. And even this little tap onto the diffuse to try to draw them out, there's no panic. C9 know the utility, they've got the grab well, the nades, everything to work with, slowing down the round and allowing the flank to come through our full control for the attacking side now. A much more direct early round approach. Leaf sees one, but you're really not going to get a lot done with a stinger in that position. Looks like 
G2 have the idea of potentially trying to pincer. Maybe catch someone off guard with four players in these aggressive spots. The thing is, getting through this choke is not going to be easy. Already a lot of damage done. A second player waiting, but Oxy is clean. He's oh. even going to dance his way around while Zephyr does the job. It's a kill at least for Jonah P, but the B site completely under Cloud9's control. And that's the thing. I, I've been so impressed with, more so than anything, Cloud9's synergy. Like, this is a roster that, again, you, you've had a couple of players join. A lot of teams take it a bit easier in the offseason. I don't think they've ever been one of them. They want to get well drilled, get things started early. They like to play through these tournaments. As I said, we've already been in the final twice before. And with the way they're playing, who's to doubt them doing that once again? Cycle of utility for Rossi just came back online. He's used his drone, his recon came through as well, even on low HP. His impact here should be huge. The information that they'll get on the back of this, and indeed it draws the eye of Giorgio as Oxy steps in for the battle, knocks over the final dominoes, and a repeat of Sunset. C9, 4-0 on their map pick. The 2-0 looking more and more doable by the second. I wonder if this is where we might see Josh RT come in with a pause. I, I, I obviously... Going into the next round is where they have themselves to buy. It will be a slower start again. But also, again, you mentioned that dart in the moment. It revealed every single player. Yeah, like, that, is, that is basically a moment where Oxy goes, oh, I know exactly where everybody I'm about to fight will be. Never really doubt it. And not just that, but Jogamo, <laughs> one of the guys who's putting up a couple of the numbers, he is, I guess, not forced. You could have relied on a teammate, but heat of the moment, he turns to try and destroy the dart. Out in the middle of the open, Oxy's like, oh, you're revealed? You're not looking at me? That's pretty free. And the rest of the kills guess. just come as easy as can be. G2 with a pause early on. This is very, very, very much needed. Well, I'm, I'm going to make a call back again. I said we haven't seen the best of Oxy at the beginning of the day. He's 9 and 1 right now. Yeah. 9 and 1. <laughs> and he's about to come into this round. Listen. Oh, yeah, the people at home, they, they, can, they can't a neon, see. A Neon Bucky is a what he neon currently has. Bucky. Now, he does have overdrive, so that will be where he gets the range from. But again, if you're going to go dancing into the site, get, take that aggressive position, especially if you get deep into A or even in positions on middle, that Bucky is deadly. Mm. Like, we have seen some utterly disgusting clips, which I, I'll be honest, I feel like needed a like, not safe for work title on them. Here he goes again. Oh man, this time he's put to bed. <laughs> Not quite. That's a lot of extra bullets there, Leaf. <laughs> hey, listen, you got to be sure mm. you're facing down against Oxy. You know, a little bit of an aggressive start to the round and. Not quite the impact they were looking for. C9 towards the A site. We'll try to force these players back. Utility's done well to clear the site. The drone confirms that info. And it looks like they'll try to get the plant as a result. Art secured by Vic. Me oh, no. That was a tap. And then an immediate rotate. They're going to try to battle this three. This is a beautiful strategy. G2 should be caught off guard. Jonah P needs to hold strong. Good for the first and the second. All three. Jonah P puts a stop to this madness. A C9 finally tastes defeat on Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Leaf is definitely <laughs> trying to make sure that his opponents know. That was a big round. A big adaptation as well from Jonah P. As you said, like, there was the tap and attempted bait. They wanted players to be pulled into that position, try and get them to re-aggress. And I think the call was made, whether it was Jonah P or somebody else, just saying they have not planted, they are Something not on, on this site. Be prepared for a move. And he just moves into a headshot position, a spot where it's difficult for them to hit him. And if he lands his shots, he wins the round. And that's exactly what he does. Still, though, it's not going to damage C9's economy at all. The operator, in fact, bought up to Oxy. Last round with a Bucky, this round with a not. Dynamic. <laughs> he can do it all. Some better than others. Let's see how this operator goes. There's a player tucked in the corner. It is Jogamo, and you can see the fear instilled inside of Oxy. Flash comes through. He's used his fast lane, and now this is a delicate situation. If he clears the corner, Jogamo could be in big trouble. And he hits the shot. A quick scope. He'd given up on a player being there. The jump scare just about got the reaction in time. And G2, a man down. 
And the defense set up towards this A site, a ton of utility, and it looked for a moment like the spike was going into it, but now they go the other way. This was a, a lurking neon op B long. Like, he had no support. There was no one there. The rest of the team were ready for a hit on the other side of the map. And you can see at the moment, G2 constantly trying to rotate around. The jump from Trent gets absolutely nothing. And now what was a, a bait to try and get them to rotate to B leaves one man to try and defend it all. Leaf versus the world oh. goes peeking and he's already being spammed out. Has to retreat. That afterplant will come in. And already having yourself a Hunter's Fury in this position. I don't know if there's a way back into this round for G2. I mean, they tried, they threw something out, Leaf walking through the smoke, but the dart from Rossi, it pinged him as he stepped out of the smoke. My man went in blind and well, they revealed him right away, so Moose. Ready. He's been patiently waiting for his chance to strike. And as Leaf falls, Jonah P and Valen seek to save their weapons, but Moose is not going to allow that. At least not for free. He's sending himself after them, clearing into the spawn. Could be ships in the night. They may just pass by him. In fact, they may even see him with his back turned. Oh, and he stepped in and seen them. That could have been a disaster for G2. But they may yet get to hold on to those weapons. Yeah, I don't think there's a way that they can actually challenge them without just full sprinting and attempting to try and take someone down. So at least a couple of guns will be held through into the next round. But again, it's another round from C9 where you can't really blame the opponents for not having a good read on the scenario. As I said, look at where the rest of the team are That's on the map. It, the, the guy was just solo, neon with an op, going down B long, just looking for a fight the entire time. He gets it at an unfavorable moment and still manages to land the shot. And from then onwards, you could just see constant rotations, pieces of utility being used by C9 to sell ideas. And then they just get that little piece of information. And it's all easy from there. Oh, no, Jogamo blinded up now, has to run away. The fast lane used, but Chona P, well, he can't quite retreat in the same manner. And he's trapped <laughs> in the corner. The nade, the Hunter's Fury, and the spams. Trent puts himself on the board at long last. It's been they a tough start, but they are more than ready for this step out. Again, he looks for the information, this time escaping with his life. Last round, it cost him it. But the advantage still firmly for C9. He's going to try to retrieve. At least a kill, there's a tag, and the follow-up is close. But again, C9 escape, not unscathed, but with the advantage intact. Leaf. It's again, it seems like the round comes down to his positioning. Are they going to expect anybody to be this far forward? He gets the one, but the trade is there immediately. It's a lot of damage done onto Vic. It gives his teammates an opportunity and at least buys them a little bit of time. But with the way the push and pull has gone, the way that they've been happy oh. to you switch back to the other side of the map. That shock almost got Vic. Nanos? I think as they don't know. Thirty seconds I blocked left. It. And it blocked the turret as well. Yeah, well, also leave his dead. Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so the Nanos will do nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Unlucky. If he was alive. I saw the yeah, 10 yeah, HP, I saw the map, I got excited. Shock dart was <laughs> damn close though. Trent's read on the timing of that round was almost impeccable. Yeah, but unfortunately now they have to sit up against this passive post plant. Always been difficult, especially when fighting up against that Astra. There isn't a whole lot else to play with, though. That's the one real worry I must wait a moment. for the side of C9. Time. But never mind, wow. it's all too easy for Zeppa. Peeks out and does it on his own. Six and one. C9 again on this attack side, just absolutely running away with it. <laughs> and although there's still some spare cash here and there because of the couple of guns that were saved in prior rounds, it is not going to be a pretty picture for G2 in this round. Yeah, shy of maybe Leaf activating his uh, utility from the grave. Uh, there's not really a lot that could have. Uh, if, if you could do that, it'd be right. great. Yeah, but he still wouldn't have had the read on the timing to do it. Are, you, are, you, just, are you just leaking future? Killjoy buffs. Oh, I mean, at this stage, maybe. Maybe Clove can activate teammates' utility. Oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> that would be broken. That would be, that'd be <laughs> terrible in every ranking. No, why'd you use my nano? <laughs> Sorry, misclick. Okay. Oh, Trent, that's a beautiful pickoff rip. That's what they need. A little bit more early aggression. And it's with the weaker weapons, but that's even more valuable. Yeah, they put a couple into this. As I said, the bonus cash has been spent in order to give them a hope in hell in this round. Trent, well. Moose almost caught sleeping. And the defense are not just sitting pretty. They've taken control of B. 
It means that these ruses that have been done by C9, so pushing and pulling the map, catching them off guard, now aren't really possible. The only gap is in middle. Valen is at least keeping a, a close eye. But that's sort of the only way they could get into the B site. Instead, C9 looked to build up outside of A. No ultimates online, but once again, Zeppa is just one kill off having that null command and removing all the utility, including that lockdown. I think maybe we'll see the lockdown used before left. they have the orb in hand. The turret's already spotted them. They know that the push is coming in, but look how aggressive this spot is from Oxy. Right up, ready to battle, and there's the ultimate. No lockdown to play with anymore, and for G2, Sending those players back and forcing them into the flank would have been huge. But instead, these weaker weapons have to make it work. Jonah P down and oh, oh. that movement from Jogamo, not quite enough. All pistols taken down. Bar Trent, who's landing a quick shot with the Sheriff. Low HP on Zeppa too, but well, the bullet doesn't land. And with that, Valon, rifle in hand, seeks to save this for another chance at putting a second round on the board. G2 with just one round. As we're about to step into round nine, we need to see the brakes pumped by this attack side or this series. <laughs> Maybe safe. just as quick as the Fnatic one, if not quicker. Ah, you can just see the confidence that's being played with. Again, there were crunch moments in this round. As you said, I, I thought maybe they'd be willing to try and commit that lockdown, but they allow Zipper to get the plant. It denies any further utility, and then Moose still has quite a lot to play around. Just having that rifle catches Jorgamo still with utility in hand. He's been having a great map, Oxy as well, but that's the thing. We're seeing the depth in this Cloud9 roster, and unfortunately, some of those heroes, we mentioned it throughout the tournament, Jorgamo has been insane. Well, he's been a bit quiet in this matchup so far. Obviously, very early days for him in this roster. I'm sure there's still more to come, but for their tournament life, something needs to change. This half is already lost, but it's whether they can at least make a compelling argument for the second. Well, that's it. I, the foundations have to be laid. Or this will quickly crumble into a 2-0 for the squad that I think most people would consider to be the underdogs in this matchup. G2 on fire, defeating Fnatic, C9 facing weaker opposition, struggling against Fnatic where G2 stomped them. Again, struggling against the uh, heretics with the coach in play. Again, this tournament's all been about questioning power levels. C9 seem to have set themselves up as a more dominant squad. Second lurk up from Vic, and it's caught them Balan. It's taken smokes out, and Jonah P isolated in the open, leaves the advantage towards C9. Dead. They're still going, and that, well, is a lifeline for G2. Yeah, that's not a bad position at all. Lockdown available, but on this B side, it can be awkward to find a spot. It always leaves gaps. You can see the back of the B site is problematic. Oxy's looking to try and play ahead of it. Right ahead of it. In fact, the timing's going to be everything. Now just needs to escape to a safe spot. Has his teammates waiting patiently. They can't clear him from this position. Rossi is going to have to try and defend his teammate just about long enough. Come back in hand for Oxy. Now he can swim back out. Now they can look to work together. Just enough time has been bought and his teammate's still sitting passively, still ready for that tap to be made. It leaves Oxy to do it all. And even while being caught by a lockdown, he had support. This guy is, oh, and he barely he just survives. He just used his ult. Oh, he popped it at the yeah, end. He just used his ult by accident. <laughs> ah, that's one thing. <laughs> Ain't one up, you know, I, I can please, see by the camera. Please he was give me a replay of his face. <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> this, this man is cool. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Thank you. Thank you. When well, you're 15 and 4 and you accidentally use your ult, he'll have it back on in two rounds. By the end of the half, it'll be in play for round The, the real question, though, is what was Immy's reaction to that? Oh, yeah. I wonder. <laughs> that might have gotten a little eyebrow raise or something. Just mm. a slight sign that he's alive. A breath, perhaps. 15 kills for Oxy. The next closest player on the server has seven.
I mean, you hit the nail on the head and hammered it home, my friend. Uh, you said Oxy, we hadn't seen his true potential. We talked about it on the first map. To be fair, we only saw him in two best of ones. Yeah, so yeah, it, it course, was like, there's only so much time. But you think back to Rebel home ground in Tokyo, and it, this guy, as we said last map, we were screaming his name. Now, there wasn't much room to do that when Rossi was taking command of the series in the way he was, clutching out like he was. But now, Oxy really finding his footing. And for G2, it is slipping away round by round. They got one in round five, and since then, and apart from that, this has been the C9 show. Yeah, that's now both pauses used. You can understand for Joshua T why that felt necessary. This has been one-way traffic. Even catching Oxy in the lockdown in the last round, and he still manages to clean up. And now you look at what they have in this. The only real thing to look at is Jorgamo having a gun and having his ult. That's not a bad start. Already catching out onto one. In oh. fact, he takes down three. We're talking about him being a bit quiet. This could be the exact step up they need. Maybe the coach saying, remember who you are already. Three to his name. A ratty little angle. I don't know if he's going to be able to stop him. Looks to pull him out of position. Just find a gap around the edge. But there isn't really more to be had, you'd think. For Vic, it is going to be around the pause, successful, but more so, Jorgamo. The thrifty round across the line, the second for G2, but those are not thick enough foundations. They need to keep it going. But with Jorgamo stepping up, finding his groove, perhaps, it may not be too late for the G2 side. Let's go. Needed that. Needed that. They're yeah. overheating. Bro. Needed They're that. They're overheating. They're starting okay. to feel like maybe C9 are giving away too much, playing too aggressive. And I think we saw glimpses of that. You think about Zeppa when they had the B side just here. extending that little bit further. 4v3 and they go for another duel, equalize the numbers, give their opponents a shot. I can see that. When you're winning maybe that's a wake-up call. Exactly. <laughs> and, and you know, when you're 8-1 up, sure, you're going to do that. Are they going to do it at 8-2 now that G2 have put around on the board? Does that wake them up? Yeah, you'd have to think that... Maybe that will put the brakes on a little bit. But then again, I see Oxy pushing along with an op. And I think probably not. Hmm. I, don't, I think he wouldn't mind having his ult online right about now. But, you know, misclicks <laughs> happen. I'm out of here. But again, you can see that G2 is sort of prodding. Trying to find where this push is eventually going to come in. I, I, again, I, I love the fact that we've seen C9 yeah. really work the map throughout this series so far. They've been incredibly difficult to read, and we mentioned you know, bringing in that new IGL, bringing him back from Pacific, from T1. And I don't have much to fault, if anything, from Rossi's calling so far this series. No, That's no, a lot of info, though. That knife is super impactful. They know with 30 seconds left, this team is outside A. And they had sent Jogamo to the B site. That knife means he's here on time. A third player ready to defend. He second-guessed himself, but he's still around. Sliding into position, Hunter's Fury forces Fallon into the open. Jonah P does well to at least hold the line for now, but Oxy is still looking for more around the back! He threads the needle! And it's a killing blow to G2's defense. Four versus two. An exit to Red Bull home ground at this stage. After a battle okay. like that, they're not happy with it. They've taken down Fanatic. And C9, the next name on the list, Leaf onto Rossi, leaves Vic alone. A 1v2, they don't know where he is. Element of surprise still there, but he doesn't get the kill. And Leaf responds. A third for G2, 8-4 still possible. And this game, not quite over yet. Well, you talk about Valen's powers of prediction. What did he say at the end of the last round? Overheating, and I think that's exactly what that was. A 4v2 scenario, look to close it out just that little bit too fast, and they get caught for it. Because the way this round kicked off, you're talking about Oxy just having an absolute field day. There is wow. nothing that Joan and Pete can do about that. But then a couple of quick kills leaves Vic. And that's the thing, his spot was a surprise, <laughs> but when it good. gets into those sort of positions, it's like, okay, how much can he get from that corner? A big round for G2. Similarly to the last map, coming alive in the late rounds of the first half. They're looking to make it a different story, though. 9-3. You look back at this map in the past, 
Teams could put a lot of attack rounds. I don't know if that will necessarily be the same here, but four rounds, it might just be possible for G2. Oh, John, come on, I thought he looked away at the wrong moment, but he glanced back just in time. Moose down and out of the round. And the traps that were securing your back now no longer in play. No info. And on the Ooh. other side for G2, they've got all the info. Hunter's Fury put in. Nice tag. And the prediction was decent. But Oxy can quickly evade at Hunter's Fury. So damage done. But no more players removed. Still, the advantage sits with the defenders. To be honest, removing that <laughs> dash from... Oxy might not be a bad thing. That's, I don't think that's a bad trade, honestly. Okay, I've had to use a Hunter's Fury, <laughs> Hunter's Fury. but he can't slide into the site anymore. Well, one until more time. He, the, yeah. Can't slide on me twice. Which is how he got those kills towards backside. I mean, he took down Jonah P, just broke his neck on a quick swing. You had to fight it. 30 seconds left. This cosmic divide allows them. Light towards the elbow. They're, they're looking like they might have to push through oh. their own utility, but that's if they even get that far. They're getting slaughtered on the way in. Vic has at least been able to clear out one player. They know the Valon is sat towards the pit, waiting, trying to hold on as long as possible while his Second. teammates look to wrap around. He's bought them time, and this plant needs to go down and needs to go down now. But already, Jorgamo is upon them. The spike goes down, but so to the members of C9. It will be four rounds and three in a row for G2 to at least make this look possible. 8-1, the call is they're overheating and now it's 8-4. to four. G2, uh, they're still behind. There's still a lot of work to do. They need to take C9's map pick. But when we go to bind, they know that that is a map they have found immense success on. Yep. They sent home the second EMEA team, one that I think most people would consider the number one here. 13 to 2. So the chances are there, but they need to get themselves to bind, and that means doubling the rounds just to equalize. Maybe you can get easier on the attack, though. Nice! Yeah, I, I, I think especially, again, seeing Jorgamo having a couple of rounds, a couple of 3Ks towards the end of that half that really did make the difference, I think he's going to be integral, obviously, going into that attack. A lot of it will be his space taking. But again, this is where I feel like Valon can really earn his money, as if he doesn't already. Having that call, and we saw it from Rossi in the previous half, just being able to have that push and pull around the map really cause issues for your opponent, and having the setup available to put your star player Oxy into position. 18 and seven, by the way, unmatched within the server. The question is, can he keep that up on defense? Definitely a lot more difficult potential to see that operator in his hand again although i do think g2 did an excellent job in the previous map to sort of isolate him when he had that off he wasn't able to get too much done with it so if that's going to be their game plan it might be a little bit tougher for him they did but thinking back a lot of it came down to even in particular the breach utility it felt like pretty consistently it was either the relay bolt or that fault line coming through to push those uh, that operator back out of position to stop and from being able to get him getting involved when they were taking the pushes it won't quite be as easy with this composition don't have peace straight in the doors oh. and zappa closed that one on his nose five um. versus four and oxy has decided to That's keep playing the attack side he is, is right up behind them and with spike drop they will take that oh. space and hold on tight I, I can understand from the perspective of G2, like you don't expect someone to continue to push that, but now they have to go back. That's such an important kill for Jorgamo to get it, but then the wraparound again. again. That is two players caught in the back for the side of G2. The positioning from C9 is absurd. They've got a player in the spawn right now, but they still have Moose sat with his util and Vic there on the site. They have them completely in trapped in. Sap is here to help in Art with a flash, primed and ready. Low HP is a ghost to spam. Oh, okay. gone down, oh, but mind. there's the trade. And then the flash pops, and the swing, Moose, not facing a blinded opponent, but with low HP, Jogama wasn't going anywhere. Another pistol round. Four out of four for the side of C9. And we talk about this all the time in the MEA. It's so difficult to win a game when you're losing both pistols. Maybe if you can upset them in round two. But the reality is, Tom, They've not just been losing pistols, they've been losing the second, the third, and the fourth round as well. This is a disaster for G2, and it's not a matter of waking up later. They need to wake up, maybe not this round, but the round yeah. after. First given opportunity, 
or C9 are running away with it. Yeah, all I'll say is that the Lion, the Witch, and the audacity of this Oxy. That guy to just <laughs> walk straight through and assume that nobody's still holding oh. that. You can see he is having an absolute whale of a time. And yeah, that, that's a slightly heavier investment than what we've seen from G2 in the past. Normally it was literally just straight classics. They've got some space here. Again, though, we've seen this in the last map. C9 very happy to play retake. Mooks normally pretty good in position to just delay, try and hold on to some ground. He's got to be careful. They've taken a lot of control in middle and potential for him to be overwhelmed. Obviously only having a stinger here, but now with those weak weapons, those classics, those other pistols, there's a chance to try and play aggressively. Musto has been watching. He is waiting. The expectations there for the stinger will be grasped. It's not quite the right weapon for the job. Overwhelmed by the numbers. C9, damage done onto Valent. And he's up close looking for the fight, doing damage back. A nice kill, the element of surprise and the stinger. Leaf drops Oxy on the back. He just hit in the corner, the trigger discipline. No hold way. On. It's all falling apart. Leaf, 30 oh HP, and it's a God. shock dart from Rossi. He might go down to the utility of Leaf. And the time might be close, but I don't think it's quite close enough. Oh. And just about under a second. T2, they tried their best, but their best was not good enough. 10 to 4. Rossi is cheating, man. Like, it, it, like Vic is literally, he's the one that gets the defuse, by the way, at the end. Vic, yeah. the guy who was in his astral form being shot and still managed to survive because his teammate just headshots the opponent through the box no. and then gets the last guy with a shock dart. You also think as well, if he survives, that's GG. That's round over. <laughs> also, if he goes into astral form, just one step to the right, that nano takes him down. Yeah. So, like, we could have had a double kill from a nano to close out the round from the grave. And by a fraction of an inch, just like the last map, 0.06 of a second, C9 are pushing these rounds. There. 10 to 4. But that wasn't the round that G2 needed to win. This one is. Oh, yeah, you look at the buy. If they lose this one, we can just call it there. Uh, <laughs> we just end the map here because you're looking at Stingers, a Sheriff, and a solo no! Guardian. That's not a bad start, though. Vic is a survivor. I'm getting scared. Uh, luck, the only silver lining is the fact that that gun is not retrievable, at least now. It is stuck in middle. Pushing that spot would be a huge gamble from the players of C9, honestly. With how they've been in these low buy rounds, I don't even think they need to push. Nope. I think pretty capable. There's a player like Vic with that weaker weapon in hand, and well, he'd be playing. He'll be playing in the back lines, just using his utility at this point. And he's only got the one star left. There could be some refreshing at the moment, though. So we see stars come down from G2, the A site. Clearly, the intention. Oxy's got a good weapon to work with. They push into that smoke. They are not going to have a good time. There's even a chance that he pushes out of it. No real utility here, but we're just seeing Zeppa arrive. No flashes, though. So Oxy just has to do it on individual skill. And that doesn't seem to be too bad for the first, at least. He's seen another. The spams, the classic comes out. And the trades from his teammate, keeping a doable leaf down to 36. Doing his best up against two, dodging the shock darts, but not the bullets. This is a death blow from C9. As G2 looks set to exit Red Bull home ground after besting Fnatic, they are now 11-4 down. This could be a quicker series than the one they dished out earlier. Ah, that's the thing. Yeah, we spoke about G2, the fact that they managed to quickly dispatch a Fnatic in that previous best of three. Said, okay, maybe now doing two in one day is possible. They've, they've used that as a warm-up. They go up against their uh, North American compatriots and look to try and take them down as well. But it seems like that was just too much to try and attempt in one day. A team that last year, the previous iteration of G2, okay, it was only one player difference. They brought mm -hmm. in a champion's winner. But before, they were able to beat C9 twice in the VCT. Now C9 Ooh. look not only to find their revenge, but also make their way straight towards the grand final. Be the first team there with either T1 or foot to join them, unless G2 can pull off a miraculous recovery.
A little shock dart from Trend at the start of this round to try to remove the camera that was in play towards the doors. And as a result, they push into it, but they see that the camera was still there. The information is given away. And as a result, the reposition from Moose. I love this. They're keeping G2 on their toes. Out they go. Taking the space eventually. But the trap waiting for them might not be expected. If they go running into it, it could be a disaster. Now there's no one there to punish. Do they still but Moose, expect Moose has to be cleared from this corner, and he's got the perfect timing. A clean kill and the info as a result. But Jonah P punishes. Ah, that's such an important trade. They're still going to have the reveal, still have the information, but nobody really there to punish. A nice shot to start with, and a tag connected by Rossi. He could get two for one. He's not far away. Trent on just one health. Stuck in the corner. 20 seconds. They've got to retrieve the spike, and now it's left all on to Leaf. To get a plant here, it's going to be difficult, and you can see just how controlled Cloud9 are being. They were waiting for this player to try and make a move. Spam with utility. The stun even connects as well. It is perfection from C9. 12 to 4. An eight round streak for G2 to survive in Berlin. You know what, Mystic? I was right there with you, man. G2 0. I saw it. <laughs> it seemed like it was the play, but man. You know, he's you bigger know, than you, right? We're going to need a hug after this one. I have to hug it out. What has occurred? Nine rounds in the series so far for G2. I, I had it all in my head. The reason that G2 beat Fnatic so strongly, they're a better team. They're going to stomp C9. Maybe there could be a bit of life if Oxy has a game. And somehow it was Rossi that led the charge to start with. Well, in this map, yeah, sure, Oxy is definitely at the top, but we've seen rounds from everybody. Yep. Solid utility, synergy. And already an aggressive start to this round. It is a direct take to try and bring things back. And already it is another nail in the coffin. A three versus five. Weaker weaponry. A lockdown put into play. And for the side of C9, you go, okay, I don't even need to fight this. There is no reason for us to overcommit, to overplay our hand or to overheat, as it was so kindly put by Valon. Now he sits as... One of the three players left to try and fight this back. Zephyr has a bit of timing. And he's tagged up, but the punish still not there. These are kills they need. These are kills they need! And G2 have Jogamo to try to recover. A desperate attempt, and he's making a beautiful display of it. Swinging out for one more, but he's stopped at the last hurdle. A dominant series for C9 as they put themselves a spot in the Red Bull home ground grand final. Their usuals there. Going all the yeah. way back, maybe this time they can lift the trophy. Playing like this, I wouldn't be surprised. A super impressive performance from them overall. I, I, I think we talk about this addition of Rossi and of course Vic, these two players that are, are coming in as well. Rossi in map one was by far the best player. Unbelievable. Incredible stuff from him while also leading the charge. But you can see it on their attack sides especially. Just the fact that they have such a good sort of push and pull around the map. The quick switch ups that made it difficult for G2 to get a read on them. And that's a big name to take down to make their way straight into the final. Of course, they'll be sitting there tomorrow as there will be T1 and Foot looking to face off. And honestly, with this performance, they might be favorites to take it all. Yeah, C9 secure their place. As you said, in the home ground grand final once again, and they'll be hoping it's their time to champ for sure. G2's journey ends here and now decisive, dominant, just truly deserved, Tom. Yeah, no, I, I think really impressive. I, I said earlier on that I wanted to see the best of Oxy. I think we got it in this series. <laughs> this last map especially, <laughs> he, he was just having an absolute field day, but it is the, the new players that also, I, I just think, have brought that extra depth in terms of their utility. Like, you watch the way that Rossi plays to sort of support and guard, like, Oxy while he's trying to retreat. I remember the round with the lockdown, it's like, you're going to play aggressive, you're going to get caught, and I've got your back. Yeah. And then when I go down, you can finish the job. And the same with Vic as well. Like, this is a player coming up, again, from the Tier 2. We talked about that with this whole G2 roster when they came up, but he was one that finished third in that Ascension run. 
and he looks great. Like, just in that supportive role in the late rounds, you've got the chaos of someone like Oxy, and then you have the safe pair of hands of someone like Vic. Yeah, I mean, someone like Rossi, the, you got to look at the push and pull, and one of the things that we talked about on map one, so we had some beautiful rounds from G2. Valent called some beautiful spots, had C9 on the ropes in a couple of rounds, but man, the real blows were dealt by C9 here. How many times did we see on that defense they're able to get behind their opponents. They've got the perfect read. They've got the stacks. Everything was going their way. And honestly, I start to question maybe if this wasn't back-to-back -back games for G2, it could have been a little bit different. I don't know if Who the knows? stamina is something that came into play here, but that didn't look like the same team we saw against Fnatic. It's also the prep aspect. I, exactly, I think they're a team yeah. that always come incredibly well prepared, and it is very difficult to do that when you play back-to-back -back games. Of course, we're going to have that caveat for them, and I, I don't think there's any doubt that when they go into the season next year, this is going to be a team to watch. They got, oh, yeah. they got champions last year. I yeah. would be gobsmacked if they're not on that run again. Yeah, Mitch, huh. there's some serious positives we can take from G2 going into next year, but all eyes right now on C9. It, it, securing that spot in the grand final, that semi final, you're looking up at that next. You've got T1 um, versus Foot. Wait, it, the, the, the thing is, Rossi came yeah. from T1. Yep. There is a chance for a grudge. Can you match. imagine? The, the, what the a team phenomenal that, game that, that sort of be. let him go to build the Korean super team. If he goes back to America, back home, comes in with another team and then beats them in the final. The stories are right in themselves. Now, I don't even have to do it. It's also beating them in a final where, okay, first of all, we talk about pressure for Rossi. You're coming in, you're taking over this team and the bar is already set. C9 is a team that makes it to the Red Bull home ground grand final. If you yeah. fall short, team has downgraded. He's made it. c 9s not a team that lifts that trophy. If they lift it with him, it's going to be a whole different game. I mean, the pressure's on for this guy to deliver, but what we saw here today, I don't think that's going to get to him. Oh, look, you can celebrate all you want, but like you said, Mitch, job's not done. And Adam Savage, my boy, is standing by with Rossi right now for a chat. My guy, thank you so much, Ian. Uh, Berlin, would you please give it up from Cloud9? It's Rossi! Yes! Rossi, I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of the fans here holding up your name in, 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 you know, in signs. How does it feel, though, to have gone through to the final of home ground 2024? Honestly, it's like a great uh, moment because I haven't won in like a long time. Even when, like, before I left T1, it was a lot of losses. So it's good to like win now and win a little bit, even after we like lost in like the Senate Invitational. So I'm just very blessed and grateful to be here and winning. And my mom's in the crowd, so I'm, I give all the credit to her and God. Can we, can we give a shout out to your mom? Where, I don't know where she, where she, we, we, she's, she's somewhere over there. She's somewhere. Where's there. Rossi's mom? <laughs> hey, congratulations. <laughs> Is it the final? Love it. Brilliant. Uh, in terms of like, you know, the, 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 the actual uh, match itself that we heard uh, from um, Mitch and Tom, they were saying about how it was a controlled performance from you guys. Did you feel the same way as well being in it too? Did you feel like you kind of, they only took, I think, nine rounds across the, the, the two wraps in the series. Um, it seemed controlled. Did it feel that way? I mean, yeah, definitely it felt controlled. There were some times where it was chaotic. Uh, Oxy and uh, is very, you know, he's very young guy. So sometimes he gets a little excited and the comms are a little hectic, but we learned a lot. Uh, to like control that and it's been just an overall learning experience. We're still a young team. I mean, I'm a young IGL, I'm only 21. So it's a lot of learning, but I give all I give all the glory to God for that and just my teammates and my coaches who've been helping us and yeah, just improving us every day. The proper way, not just the small, not just the band-aid fix or the fast way. We've been doing it the proper way, I'd say. So, I mean, it's just, we're reaping the rewards of our hard work. Absolutely. I mean, on the IGL thing as well, the last three uh, IGLs of Cloud9 have each retired. We shouldn't get concerned, should we, now that you've assumed the role? I hope not. If okay. It, I hope not. Just making sure, just making sure for everybody here, including your mum in the audience. Um, obviously, we can see some of the kind of uh, the, uh, the, the playbacks on the screen as well here. Um, for you guys looking ahead to tomorrow and that grand final, um, how do you prepare personally as well? How does the team prepare now? How do you kind of, um, is it a bit of an R&R? &R? Do you kind of go into like reviews? How do you, how do you guys prepare for a, a grand final in the likes of Red Bull home ground? I mean, it's this is just like just any other day right like it's a grand final yes it's a big moment and it's very important but you have to understand like how to value something right and it's like we still we to get here we did what we had to do right so we're doing the same thing that we would do like review practice hard make sure that we're like warming up properly and just putting a lot of hard work and that's how you get here right it's simple as that so as long as we keep doing that then we should reap the rewards and win the grand final yeah i mean we see actually so many of uh you know other players out here the fans of course Friends and family here too as well. We actually mentioned your, your mum being in the crowd there. Oh, look, look who it is! Hey! 
There we go. Ah, oh, I love that. Um, but how great is it as well to have the support from everybody you can see here? You can really feel there's an energy here. Have you guys felt that too, being out there playing on stage? Of course. I think, uh, especially after G2 knocked out Fnatic, I feel like the home crowd, you know, we had to get a, do it for the crowd to win against G2. But it's also yeah. kind of sucks because those are our NA family too. You know, those are our brothers right there. And it sucks to knock them out. But yeah, it feels the energy is great though. And I'm very appreciative of the fans. They've been nothing but great. And it's been a great crowd and just great country and great people all around. Totally agreed. And tomorrow is going to be a big day, obviously. Uh, we're looking ahead to T1 versus Foot as well. Um, for you guys, any kind of predictions ahead of time who you think may get there in the final? You mentioned T1 earlier on uh, and your familiarity with T1. Um, but who do you think could go all the way? Who do you think you'll be facing off against uh, come tomorrow afternoon? Oh, I mean, that's that's tough. It's like, I feel like Foot is like has a very hot hand. They have like the young gun and I think his name is Z uh, Zeus or something like that. He's yeah. a very incredible player and they have an incredible team, UDJ, Mr. Fallen. They have a strong team. Both are very strong teams. Uh, I have my own bias. I'll let you choose which <laughs> yeah. one I'm going to bias. But uh, I honestly, no bi all ball bias aside, they're both very strong teams, very great teams, and it's going to be close. It definitely won't be easy matchup. Okay. And lastly, for the last two home grounds, Cloud9 runner-up. Third time lucky. Is it going to happen, Rossi? Will Cloud9 win tomorrow? Hey, that, that's all in God's hands, but I hope so. We hope so. We hope so, too. We all hope so. Uh, one more time, would you please get up from Cloud9? Rossi, everyone! What a hero. We cannot wait to see Cloud9 in the main event tomorrow in the grand final. Uh, for now, though, back to Ian and the gang. Thank you very much, Adam. Um, the mum buff, that's what it was all along. For sure. For that sure. and the fact that it's just absolutely phenomenal. I, I would say also that, like, when I was 21, I was not that well spoken. Absolutely. I, I would say those are some you're of the still most not. Yeah, true. That's you know, true. One other thing I'll say 46. <laughs> When I was 21, I definitely wasn't that talented. I don't think yeah. I am <laughs> that's, or ever that's will true. be. That's true. I mean, just an unbelievable <laughs> set of, of games. The calling was un unreal. And I love what I loved about it the most, though, was really the respect you can see he has for his opponents, not even the ones that he's playing here on the stage, which obviously he did. And he said it sucks to send them home as his fellow countrymen. <laughs> but even knowing about foot, their I players, was say, and think about the amount of people shoutouts, who it's like. Sick. I haven't really looked at the no, teams coming like, up. I, I hear that like who those every, guys are. Every like, time this interview is like, oh yeah, I haven't looked at them at all yet. And I'm he's only going, looking at oh, the team yeah, the youngster Zeus. Like, like he's so yeah, tuned yeah. in yeah, yeah, to yeah, what's yeah, yeah. coming up. That again, I, I think this guy leading the team is just a great example. And again, he's given a shout out to the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. I think Imi behind the scenes. It, he looked chill, but I imagine he's got a bit of a smile now. Yeah, I mean, look, Rossi, very, very special individual indeed. And sometimes, you know, at these tournaments, we're very lucky when we get a player that really pops off and, and shines throughout a series, especially coming up clutch and, and locking. Or somebody does it twice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got two for the price of one here. Oxy and Rossi putting up numbers. Well, what was it again? Oxy. Roxy. Yeah, come go. on. you got to make it stick. Are you going to stick with it? Yeah, why not? But how lucky are we to have two of them going crazy? Oh, I, real, I'd man. say as well the fact that Oxy has come back after... Like, it was probably a bit of an underwhelming year for yeah. Cloud9. But after last time he was here, Rebel Homeground in Japan, he was insane. He's come back again. This might just be his tournament. Like, yeah. He's the guy that comes in for Rebel Homeground and just performs fantastically well. And as I said, he just joined Cloud9. Now he's been with them a year. At moments, they were close to making it to these international events, but I'm sure he's happy to be here in Berlin, performing on that stage. And as I said, like, Rossi, they've not had a, a mass amount of time with this team, but they already look great. Still, nobody wants a silver medal. No, that's no. True. I think C9 of all. Yeah, G2 teams. zero, right? Yeah, that's what Mystic said. Mystic that is what Mystic said. I was live. with C9 the whole time. That's what way. he said, live. 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 live on air after that <laughs> one. Live. No, leave him alone. Leave him alone. <laughs> um, let's take a look at the bracket. Let's take a look at the bracket. Let's have a gander. Oh, we've had a very interesting play there that started not ideal with ideally. We were supposed to have two quarterfinals today and a semi. Team Heretics having to give up their position. Uh, foot get the bye straight into the semi-final because Team Heretics, of course, had an illness in the camp. And then Heretics got the bye because of that. Bye-bye. That is true. <laughs> okay. And then we saw Fnatic lose at the hands of G2. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the most recent result, we saw Cloud9 book that spot in the final. We have two more series to play. We've got T1 versus Foot. Two teams that we haven't actually seen live and in person on the main stage yet. Well, the, the exciting thing about this one is going to be either you have Foot, who have gone through the Turkish qualifier, the play yeah. making it to the final, potentially winning. That's a story and a half. Yeah. Or you have Rossi versus T1 facing up against the team that literally just let him go and went to build a Korean super team in its place. It really is just 
no matter what, we have storylines. And with him, I said, 21 years old, leading this team to victory, no matter what, it's going to be a banger. You know what? Obviously, massive thank you to you watching at home. But I I'm going to be real right now, Mitch. I think it's going to be mega loud in here tomorrow. I think it's the uh, atmosphere was phenomenal here mm. today. This was a pleasure to cast in front of this crowd. And, you know, I think from watching it at home, you, you don't get the, the same kind of scale. It's got a beautiful setting. And I think looking at that final tomorrow, yeah. BO5, before that at BO3, one of the big questions, because I think, I think we got to see an element of what happens in these long days yep. with G2 here today. They had a phenomenal yep. opening series. And I'm not going to say it's all because of they cooled off. C9 played a unbelievable game. They deserve this win. But if you imagine tomorrow you play that BO3, goes all three maps. It's a long one, 13-11, maybe OT's in there. And then you hit that BO5, that's going to be a grueling way to go about it. If you're playing that final tomorrow, that semifinal, you need to be winning it clean. You yep, got to get yep. that over Absolutely. with to keep the momentum rolling. So I don't think that's going to happen between those two teams. You heard it from Rossi. It's going to be a long one. So they better get that stamina up. All right. Well, Mitch, Tom, it's been a pleasure being back alongside of you here on the desk at Red Bull Home Ground. Big shout out to AOC, to Blacklight, and to Jeep, who are our partners this year. A big shout out to you. Make sure you are back here tomorrow, 1.30 p.m. Or some other time, depending on where you live in the world. We will <laughs> crown our Red Bull Home Ground Champions 2024 when it's all said and done. See you tomorrow.